to share the plot to the very scripture that they play. So I'll play the guy for a dare set that's dead or wrong. Because if in fact, God would say to all those who defy the written word of God, then those, the man with the flag, those would be the ones who are so clearly and repeatedly defying the word of God. And I love these men. So I hope that they are wrong in their own church. I don't know these men. So I can't say that I love them in the same way that I love you. But I care about them and I wish them well being. I wish them no harm. As was commanded by Jesus, I love even those who would make themselves my enemy. Jesus was crystal clear. Every time a righteous man, a religious teacher, stood on the street corner and condemned someone for sexual misconduct, I 
Uh, and I, I just see what a wonderful bouquet of beauty and love that we are providing with. This day needs us so badly. And we are tired of the oppression that we have all been receiving here. I moved here when I was two years old from Los Angeles. And our family was part of a wonderful movement that just rose up from the bowels of the earth. And let me tell you, the, the stories about what you learn in kindergarten are very true. Because what I learned as a little child here in Montgomery, Alabama, has stayed with me my entire life. It is what I base my activism on. It is how I react to anything that happens. But there's this sort of oppression going on all around you. You learn to rise above it. You become the love that you require for yourself. Because you have to have it here before you can give it to anybody else. And what I really want to focus on today is let that noise, let that oppressive attitude dissipate off into the distance because all it is is the negativity that's pushing the positive forward. We are the revolution. If we want to change here in this state, in this country, in this universe, it has got to start right here. First, love yourself. Love yourself like nobody else can do for you. Lay your body on the earth because your mother loves you like no one else could love you. And when you are crying, when people are oppressing you and calling you every abomination in the world, lay your breast on the earth because she loves you above anyone else. And fill yourself with that spirit. The earth is the great mother. The sky is our great father. And we are here in togetherness, seeking our rights. We're not going to put up with this anymore. But I'm telling you now, if you're waiting for the people inside here, if you're waiting for the people inside the state government, or your city councils to come and help you, forget it. Because you're going to have another 150 years of the same stuff that they're dealing with us already. And I'm getting to a point where I really don't want to leave this place until I see all of us rising up and taking pride in our own selves. And instead of looking at our younger brothers and sisters and our brother sisters and all of them being murdered on the streets, being thrown out of their homes because of their sexuality or being different in any way, if we don't take our own children under our wings, who the hell is going to do it? I want you all to really take seriously in a passionate way what can I do as an individual? What can I do as a group of people? What can I do as a coalition? And you find like minded people wherever you are, start gathering together. And I'm telling you, the power of one person, the power of two people, the power of three people, keep multiplying that and see where it takes you. I promise you, if you put as much time and energy as we have done here in your daily living and everything you do as you step out of your homes, do like you told us. You call in your ancestors. You call in every force that is you. And you let that stuff out there just drown out because it is not important. You know what? They are doing their job. Their purpose in life is to push you forward. It's to make you uncomfortable enough to get off your asses and do something. And that is, we do a lot of talking about what we're going to do. I am encouraging each one of us to think of what is your greatest gift, what is it that you personally do the very best, and offer that to the community that you live in. And I think if each one of us does that, 
We're going to have a powerful revolution on our hands, and it's not going to stop until we accomplish our purpose, which is full rights for all of our people, not just those that are millionaires and millionaires who have taken this place, the world down the tubes with their green. You know, why are they in office in the first place? Because we haven't got off our asses to get out and vote. Well, I'm telling you, we have two members in our group who are going to be running for office. One is following me, and so, <laughs> so uh, we are we are getting our people ready to take places in our government and make a difference. We have another young gentleman right here who's going to be running for office. Yeah, you know, so get yourselves ready. We got some good candidates coming up, and I want you to start looking amongst yourselves. Let's find who is going to be that's going to take the place of these uh, people that aren't serving a purpose. So anyway, welcome to uh, Montgomery. We are going to put a, a community center together here, and I hope everybody does the same to help their young people, help their elderly, help the homeless on the streets. Uh, we had a young man, an older gentleman that walked by here while we were scoping out the place the other night. He asked us for food and water. And we got to talking with him, we gave him some money, and shared energy with him, and he looked at this building and he said, when that building feed an awful lot of people, why did they put so much money in this building when there's so many homeless around? Because we let them do it. Anyway, I'm so beautifully proud of every single one of you here. And learn to tone this out. All they're doing is pushing you to do something better than what they're doing. Now what, well, I have one question here. How many of you in the audience that have come here today have never been homeless, have lived on the street, been kicked out of your home? I want you to raise your hand. If you've been homeless before, living on the streets, and I want you to remember how that was. And remember that our younger brothers and sisters and our brother sisters and our children out there, they need us desperately right now. I'm tired of seeing them getting murdered and committing suicide and all these things because people treat them like trash. So please embrace, embrace them and do everything you can to find a way to help them. Thank you so much for coming to my gallery. We got good things planned here. Thank you, Ms. Nana. I'd like to remind everybody, you know, a lot of people think that the target here today, that this is all about Roy Moore. A lot of people want to tell you that this is only an LGBT issue. Both of those people are wrong. This is not an issue just for the LGBT community. This is not just about one man. This is about maintaining and securing and preserving a fair and impartial justice system in our government in the United States of America. A fair and legal justice system for all citizens of the United States of America is what is at stake here today. The LGBT community is standing here, standing up for the same people that we have stood with. We stood up with women's suffrage. We stood up during the civil rights. We stood up during the women's movement. And even if we stand alone, we still stand strong. Because we know, within our hearts, repeat after me, liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all, for all. Not, some. not some. Say it again, liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all, for all. Not, some. not some. Say it loud enough from the bottom of your soul, liberty, liberty and justice. And justice. For all. For all. Not some. Not some. Now when we upset that balance of power, when we make our legal system impartial, we allow for any judge to be impartial. We allow for a judge to do as he pleases 
in divorce court. We allow for a judge to do as he pleases in civil court. We allow for a judge to do as he pleases in criminal court. We allow for a judge to do as he pleases in any court, anywhere, and at any time. We cannot allow that. We cannot stand idly by and watch what our founding fathers and every veteran in the history of our country fought and died for just simply wash away. The LGBT community says, we refuse to see your sacrifice dishonored. We refuse to let prejudice stand. We have fought for everybody else to have an equal place at the table who had sacrificed our own for so long. Now, it is our time. You may not be ready for it, but you better be ready to make way because we are coming through. We will not allow one man to destroy the balance of our legal system. We will not allow any man to upset the Supreme Court of the United States. We will not allow one man to sit there and tell us that the Supreme Court of the United States has no power anywhere. We will not allow that because if it starts here, it will roll across America like a tidal wave. The power of the Supreme Court is your final defense against unconstitutional and unfair laws, whether they are passed by Congress, as was the Defense of Marriage Act, or whether they are passed by a state, such as the Alabama Sanctity of Marriage Laws. The Supreme Court is your final defense. It is your final defense against anything that would allow, inhibit your liberty, anything that would allow, inhibit your pursuit of freedom, anything that would allow your, and limit your pursuit of happiness. That is what it is designed for. We cannot, we have to stand fast. We have to defend the Supreme Court because they are our final defense. Without that defense, we are defenseless. So please, remember, liberty, liberty. and justice, and justice. For, all. for all, not some. Not some. Thank you. Can I get you to hold this for me, darling? I know she ain't no stick. Look, I'm used to making head pieces. That's my first protest sign. I can't get you. I'm, I'm sorry, girl. I did you know, what else was saying? Yeah. And I'll be honest with y'all, you know, I was semi-retired. I thought I thought I was fixing to, I was fixing to lay all this stuff down, half these pieces in boxes. I thought my job was through. And then somebody decided that a, that, that, that a legal right that had been won and guaranteed to my community and to millions of Americans was not going to be allowed in my state. And I remembered my grandmother who taught me that your matters matter because matters are how you show respect for yourself and for others. And I just simply could not allow someone to show those kinds of foul manners in my home state. I could not allow him to disrespect himself, to disrespect my God who I know loves me beyond all. I could not allow him to disrespect that. And I don't want you to allow yourselves to be disrespected. I know there's a lot of hate here, but I want to remind you of something. When you encounter hate in your life, Please, don't let it in your heart. Don't give it a space. Don't give it an inch. Don't give it because it will take a mile. Do not let hate enter your heart. Do not let it make a home in your soul. Take the peace and love of your fellow man with you and know that God's love is big enough for all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to welcome to the stage a young lady who just bowls me over every time I see her. She is a powerhouse, a dynamo, and an electric ball of energy. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the female transgender community of Birmingham, Alabama, and Central Alabama Pride, would you please welcome to the stage the incomparable Miss Destiny Clark. Y'all know me, I'm really loud, so this microphone and I may not get along. First of all, my name is Destiny Clark. Second, I'm a Christian. Third, I am a proud transgender Christian woman. And I know that Jesus loves me. Yes. I know that these fools over there 
are only here to try to get us all riled up. I know that as we come together as a community, we will overpower them. Like Ambrosia said, this is more than what is here. This is more than just the gay community. This is about the Latino community. This is about the Islam community. This is about the Chinese community. This is about so much more. We cannot allow representatives like Roy Moore to continue to be elected into office to try to pass their biased laws down on us. It is unacceptable. We will overcome this no matter what they say. No matter what anyone said, we are going to overcome this today with the victory that Roy Moore will be off of the bench by the end of the day. Do you hear that? Now they're getting overworked. Let them get overworked because, baby, we got all day. We have all day. Who is ready for the drag show in a little bit? Well, honey, I have a few requests, so I'm fixing to do some gospel numbers for y'all, so y'all just get ready. Because maybe I was taught long ago, before the church tried to tell me that you are not worthy of God's love, guess what? I found out amongst my peers that I am worthy of God's love. That Jesus does love me, and he loves you, and you, and you. It does not matter what you are. The Jesus and the God that I love and worship is a God of love. It is not the God that those people over there are trying to get you to believe. So today, tomorrow, and always, remember, you are loved. No matter what anybody tells you, if you believe in Jesus, or if you believe in Muhammad, or it doesn't matter who you believe in, Buddha, just know you are loved. You have that right as an American and as an Alabamian to believe who you want to believe. It does not matter what they say because Roy Moore said they're saying it's the law. Roy Moore broke the law and we're here today to fix that. We want him out of office and we're not going to stop until he is out of office. Whether it be today, tomorrow, or next week, we will not stand, we will not sit down until he is off of that bench. This is about the smaller, the smaller, the smaller judges who think they can pass judgments about what bathrooms we have the right to go in. Well, first off, what I do in the bathroom is not any of your business. If you know what's between my legs, you and I have a problem, baby, because don't nobody know what's between my legs but me and God. in the bathroom is your business. We have to vote these people out of office. We have to continue to stand up for what is wrong. We cannot allow them to continue to pass these laws against us. Not just one part of our community, but our entire community. You have no right to say one man is one woman. You have no right. Love is love, and that is what is love. No, you don't. You're not going to sit down somewhere. Sit down. All right. I'm done. I'm done, y'all. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Ms. Destiny. I understand, girl, I believe you me, I understand, I understand, girl. They they try to slip that hate into your heart, don't they, girl? It sticks here, but you don't even realize it. That's why I want to remind everybody, don't let the hate that surrounds you in your heart, don't let it in today, don't let it in tomorrow, don't let it in ever. Don't give it an inch because it will take a mile. Don't give it an inch because it will take a mile. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce a lady who does a lot of hard work here in the local area. Um, she, you know, she, I, we, I saw her running like a scalded dog. I thought she was going to slip in a puddle of her own sweat during pride. She was working and running so hard. Y'all put your hands together for Miss Jessica Dent from Montgomery Pride United. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to you all for 
showing up. Now, I'm not going to talk to you today as just a man. I'm not going to talk to you as a Christian. I'm not going to talk to you as a woman or an LGBT, LGBT member. I'm talking to you as Alabama. Because I am Alabama. You are Alabama. And we deserve better for our Alabama leaders. Well, it was back in 1819, and we agreed we wanted to be a part of the United States of America. Well, then we had a little snafu in the 1860s, and we decided we didn't want to be a part of it. But guess what? We were wrong again. And we had to agree again that we wanted to be a part of the United States. And we agreed that we wanted to have the safety that the Constitution has gives us. It says, we the people, that's us, of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and posterity. Our liberty Secure the blessings of our liberty. Do we know what liberty means? Liberty is so defined in many ways. Liber the Liberty Council is defending Roy Moore. What does that mean? Liberty is defined several ways. Liberty is a philosophy that involves free will. That's contrasted to what is determined. In politics, liberty consists of the social and political freedoms to which all community members, that's all of us, are guaranteed. In, and in theology, liberty is the freedom from bondage of sin. And generally, liberty, to the extent that we know it in a free government, allows us the capability to have our rights, but limited by those of others. So let's, I want to do an exercise. I want you to stand up. I want you to hold your arms out. Then you are free to swing your arms left and right. But when you hit me, you are interfering with my liberty. And I can guarantee you that my marriage has not interfered with anyone's liberty in the last year and a half, nor the 14 years we were committed together before that. We deserve better, Alabama. So I want to go back to this Constitution again. It says that all men are equally free and independent that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. So when we think about their creator, our constitution does not say the Christian creator. It doesn't say the Big Bang Theater. It doesn't say Muhammad or Buddha or any of the other religious creations. It is their creator. It is an individual and personal creation that you believe in. We follow the laws of the United States. And then, to take it a step further, you know, the Alabama Constitution says the same thing. Alabama Constitution states that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We said it in Alabama. So that's what we want in Alabama. Liberty. So in Alabama, we deserve better. We are promised better. And we are better than the way we have been represented. We are registered voters, and it is time for us to change who represents us. 
imaginary lines that separate us from Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. It's not the 67 county imaginary lines that divide us. It is our communities of individuals that make up the state of Alabama. If we are community, all of us, and even them, we are all Alabama and we all deserve equality. We all deserve the same basic rights. You know, I'm proud of Alabama. I have lived here all my life. I grew up loving rural Alabama. You know, we have such a diverse and beautiful natural Alabama. Not just the, the climate. You can go to the mountains. You can go to the beaches. You can go to the prairies. And you can go to the plains. We're just as diverse as our people is as diverse as our landscape. Not only that, did y'all know Alabama is intelligent? We are smart. We had the very first trolley system in all of the United States. We put the man on the moon in Huntsville. We built ships in Mobile. We grow the best peanuts in the wire grass. And we have culture in the black belt. And we have heritage in the black belt. We stick to what we believe, but we believe in all people. Not only is Alabama good at culture, you know, we write books too. I told you we were smart. We write books in Alabama. You know, you've got Harper Lee, one of the greatest characters ever. Atticus Finch. Come on. You don't know a man's skin until or you don't know a man's situation until you've walked in his shoes. Yes. Atticus Finch was our first hero in the South. Then we got Forrest Gump. And then we got Izzy Threadgood from Fanny Flag. Don't forget Catherine Tucker Wendell. So we're smart in Alabama. We write books, we're cultured, we build rockets, we build ships, and by George, we also do good music. Did you know Wilson Pickett was from Alabama? Did you know the shows of Alabama was the 60s, 70s, and 80s recording hub? We changed the face of music in Alabama. We can change the face of equality for Alabamians too. You know, and we love being our individual selves in Alabama. We are unique. We've got monuments to bowl weevils. We've got ladies coming out of the bay. We've got an Vulcan wearing assless chaps in Birmingham. Yeah. We do. And we are just as individual as our monuments. We have been silent for too long. Our nation is built on the strengths and the struggles of the people. We cannot expect change to happen without struggles, without examples of injustice. You cannot know good without knowing evil, and we are tired of evil. We are standing in the epicenter of past injustices. Dexter Avenue, Baptist Church. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We are standing at the center of change for Alabama right now. It is time for us to stand up as a community, not just in the LGBT community. Get involved locally. Get involved in the Humane Society. Get involved in your local library. So here's some of the things I want us to think about. In Alabama, more than half of the LGD people in this state are in committed relationships. We're committed to one another. Yes. 61% of the people who live in Alabama have lived here for 20%, I mean 20 years or longer. We're here, we're not going anywhere. Demand your rights here. Don't leave Alabama. Almost half of the LGD people in Alabama are people of faith, including 60% of the African American population. Members of faith. LGBT Alabamans, though, we do not have state protections from discrimination in employment, housing, or public accommodations. So, in, with all the things we have to do, here's 
what we have to do for Alabama. We, in our state, right now, we do not prohibit discrimination in housing. We have work to do. Yes. Our state does not prohibit employment discrimination. We have work to do. Yes. Our state does not prohibit discrimination in public accommodations based on sexual orientation or gender identity. We have work to do. Yes. Our state does not have a law that addresses discrimination against students based on sexual orientation or gender identity. We 